everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really sweet double flip lid box. And this is basically evolved from the chocolate box that I shared for Mother's Day. I had a lot of requests to do a more of a box style. So although that was a box, it was very flat and it was, I guess it was quite specific for that tray of chocolates. So um, I've decided to do this one here. It's a great size. This one measures um, four by five by four and you can see how it looks on the side there and then you just open up the two sides drop down and inside you have this lovely golden chocolate easter egg this is from Marks and Spencer's you can buy them on their own and um, it's just nice then because you can make some packaging yourself I've put some of the shredded paper here and you've got lots of room to add other little treats in there. And of course, you don't have to have this as an Easter theme. This would fit a nice candle, other nice gifts inside, and you could decorate it accordingly. But I think it's very, very sweet. I love this little topper, which I've made with the little carrots, and I've put the little rabbit there as well. Um, it's very straightforward to make, so let me show you how. Okay, so these are the papers that I downloaded and printed off. So I printed some onto my 300 GSM cardstock and the best way to do that, I've just got a standard printer, but if you put one page in at a time, then you'll be able to print onto cardstock. Depending on what printer you have, if you've got something that's a lot more advanced and you can probably put more in, but I've had people before ask me how I managed to print onto cardstock with a standard printer and that's just how I do it. So just go into the image, print just the one and just have that one piece of card in, let it pull it through and then if you want more then just push print again. But I've done the polka dot, I went a bit off there but it's fine, I can still obviously use that one. That's really lovely. And then these ones I've just done onto paper because I thought they'd be nice to fussy cut. Um, so I've done two of those and then I've done this on cardstock because I think this is going to make another really nice box. I can always print more of that one, um, which I probably will actually because it's directional. I'll probably use two pieces and then I've done these on cardstock. Again, I'll probably end up fussy cutting these and I might fussy cut a couple for the topper on this project. But I just think they're really, really sweet. They're from the Paper Crafter website, which I will link in my blog post. Um, and I just think, you know, I, I don't tend to you really buy a lot of Easter papers and I've not really, I've struggled to really get some for this um, series this year. So I've just had a look online and there's so many, just type in free Easter downloadable paper and you get a ton of websites come up. So yeah, that's what we're using. So I've got, and there's also the gingham. There was one other, which was the same as this one, but it was in like a stone color, that one there, but I didn't really like it. It was a bit too, um, it, I just felt it didn't go with this collection as well as all of these because they're so bright and colourful. But I love the gingham ones, so that's what I'm using today. So I've already done one half, just like I did when I'd done the chocolate box. And I'd started to cut into this one because I just wanted to check that everything was going to come together. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is all using your letter paper size or your A4 cardstock. So you will need two pieces that are nine and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And this is for the box. So on both pieces you want to score along the nine and a quarter side at three and three quarters and eight and three quarters. So you should have a half inch tab. Then rotate and then score at three and a quarter along that seven and a quarter side. Do that on two pieces and we're going to cut it so it looks like this. And then you will need two pieces for the lid that are nine by six and a half. And along the six and a half side you want to score at two and six, so you'll have a half inch tab here, then rotate and along the nine inch side you want to score at two and seven, so you'll have two two inch sides. Okay, do that on both pieces, that's everything, so I'm just going to get rid of my scoreboard. Okay, so first of all we will concentrate on the box, so you want to fold and burnish all of the score lines. And then with your scissors, you want to have the half inch tab on your right hand side and you're going to cut up the score line to the first score line, like so. And then again with this one here, just cut up that first score line, that score line to there, and then just remove that piece completely. So you'll have something like this. Then with the tab, you just want to take a little wedge off of each corner. And then 
the shorter side is the side of the box. So this is going to come under and that's going to become the front or the back. So it's this smaller section, so the left hand side, that you just want to take a wedge off of each of those corners just so you don't get anything overhanging. Like that. Okay, that's a bit messy but you're not going to see any of that. It's because I'm using these scissors. I should be using my nice longer ones here which I can just then snip away in one cut. Much, much better. There we go. Okay, so you'll have two like this. Next, well, I didn't take a little bit off of the top of that one. What you want to do is add some glue onto one of the tabs. And then you're going to stick this piece over the top. This is on the score line, this base score line here. Make sure that stays nice and straight and all lined up. And as I always say, if you've got anything overhanging at the top, at least then you can trim it away. Okay, then flip it over. Fold over this half with the other tab and add some glue onto there. Make sure you don't get any glue on the box itself and then fold this one over and it will all line up. Again, just make sure that those score lines all meet and just burnish everything. Okay, so you'll have something like this. Next, turn it upside down. Decide which you, wait, which you want to be your front and back and then just fold, for me, I'm gonna fold the back down here. I'm gonna add glue all over here. Okay. Okay, so just fold those both in and then add glue all onto this bit. Don't worry that you've got the gap there. You can cover it with some cardstock if you wanted to, but you're not going to notice it because it's the base. It's just the, it's the size that I've done. And I wanted to try and maximise the box um, size. So then just fold that down. In fact, you don't need to put the glue on that bit because you're not uh, sticking anything to it. But that's the nice thing about this Kalau. You see there, when you rub it, it just all comes off. It comes off into a bit of a clump, so you can just... But it doesn't ruin the cardstock. Flip it over, you can just go in there and just make sure that's all sealed down. So I'm probably going to line the inside anyway because um, I just like that. And I think for this kind of project, because the lid opens up, it'd be nice. So I'm going to decorate the bottom, but I mean, if you want to decorate the bottom there as well, you can do. So that's the box done. Then we're going to make two of these. Now I had to add my hinge because I cut it off <laughs> by accident. But basically that's going to stick under there just like we did for the chocolate box. And you can see how one side's going to go over like that. It looks really nice. So to get that... You've done all your scoring, so again, fold and burnish the score lines. Okay, so you want to have your half inch tab on the right hand side. Ignore that I've cut all this, but have it on the right hand side. You'll have your two inch score line here, and this is that six inch score line there. You want to cut up this one just to the first score line. So I'm just cutting up just to that one there. Sorry, I know we've got the gingham, <laughs> it's a bit busy, but. Remember, it's that two inch score line, you're just cutting up to this two inch one because along here was the two and the six. Okay, and then you'll have this little corner here. You just want to cut up and remove that piece completely because that's going to be the hinge that we stick underneath the box. Okay, and then flip it around so now the tab's on the left hand side. And again, you want to cut up that two inch one to that first score line, and then this one here. And because I've already done the other cut, that will come out straight away. But you'll have something like this. I'm then going to take a wedge. Check I do, do Yeah, no, that is right. Off of this piece. And also off of this one here. This is now what you will have. Okay, and you'll want two pieces like that. Next, you're going to add glue onto this tab. And you're going to stick this one under here and bring this one around and they should join up nicely. Again, just spend a minute sticking that all down. Add glue to the top of this one and stick it down the same way. Okay, then you want to cut from the bottom here across to here. Now if you want to draw a pencil line from the top left down to the bottom right, you can. But I've got my long scissors here and I'm just going to go in and just cut this freehand. 
just eyeball it there, like so. Okay, so again, I can come around this side. There we go. And just make sure that's all stuck down, like so. And then you want to add glue under onto your tab. Again, you might want to just take a little bit off of the corners of each one there, actually, because you don't want that sticking out. And then I'll take that one off. It will fit along the long side. If you pop it on there and then turn it upside down, you can really push down on that tab and make sure it's nice and flush against the side there. And again, if you want to decorate that once you've stuck this down, because then you can cover everything. Actually, I might do that. We'll see at the end. In fact, this tab will end up covering that section anyway. So, and again, yours won't have this additional tab. Yours will all be like that first one. I'm just going to stick that over. It will overlap the other one slightly. And bring that over. Okay, so when that's all secure, flip it over and you've got your flip lid box or double flip lid box. And you close it up. Whatever one you put down first, the other one will just sit slightly over the top, like so. It's a really nice size box. So now we can start decorating everything. Okay, so I've just been having to play around with some stuff. I've die cut some circles I'm gonna use, but inside you'll see I've put my golden egg. <laughs> and I've just used some of this straw, or well, just shredded paper to act as straw and it's this one here which I'm sure I did share in my what did I get because I shared a lot of the Easter stuff that I had purchased yeah shredded craft paper so that's all in there and I've also lined the bottom you can see there just as some polka dot paper so if someone does want to use it afterwards then they can and I've done that on the bottom as well so you'll want two pieces if you want to decorate oh that's slipped oh dear see it's wonky it's because um obviously I didn't uh I moved, you know, I carried on whilst it was uh, still wet and it's moved, so never mind. It's three and five eighths of an inch by four and seven eighths of an inch. So it's a bit wonky on the bottom there, but it's the bottom, so I'm not too worried. But I think that looks really nice. And there's room for lots of other things as well. I'm keeping mine white on the sides, but you could easily add some, you know, pattern paper here as well. But I'm going to have this one on top, it's going to stick to one half, so whatever, you know, the, the top side. So this one's going to be on the, actually no, because I like it to open from the left. So it'd be like that, so it's going to stick on the left hand side. And then I thought it looks really cute with the three carrots on top. I just love that. But then I thought, do I want to have the rabbit as well? So I don't know whether to kind of maybe have the bunny behind a little bit um, or maybe just kind of stuck resting on the side there like that I think it's quite a cute topper and I can always add a sentiment I was going to bring in the little chick but I thought carrots go better with the rabbit so we're, we'll scrap the chicks they're going to be used for another project so I'm going to just I've got my hot glue gun on these were all picked up from the pound store they do them every single year so I've got a few from last year and then I picked up some, well, a few bags this year because I've got, these ones are felt, but there's ones that have got glitter on. There's, I've got one that's slightly bigger, but they are all going to be in my shadow box, which I'm currently making. And then that one there, so let's have those three kind of like that. And then this one, we kind of stick on the ends there. Quite a fun little topper. And then that's going to sit on one half so I'm going to use my Kalau just to cover because this will really strengthen the lid and then make sure it's nicely make sure it's nice and even the circle sizes I've got three and three quarters for the larger one actually I'll show you them here well that's just kind of dry drying the circle sizes are um, yeah three and three quarters and then the next one down is about three and a quarter okay diameter I can't remember where I got these from I think these ones were from the works if I remember rightly but it was a it was a good you know few years ago now so 
but um, any nice circle, you know, and you might want to do squares, you might do something completely different, but um, just make sure it doesn't shift like the bottom did. And if I open that out, I can just really make sure that sticks down. But you've just got so much room in there, so that's stuck down, that can all come up, and then that closes up on top. Isn't it sweet? I just really like this. I just wanted something that was just with the gingham and the orange and just quite clean and crisp. Um, I always like to go over the top with things, so that's what I've done with the topper, but I'm keeping the box all, you know, quite plain. Um, and then when you open it up, you've got that golden egg inside. I'm tempted to do something in here though. Let me just see what scraps of the yellow I've still got. So I've just stuck these down here. So it was the paper that I was going to fussy cut, but it's got Happy Easter on it. So this is four and three quarters by three and three quarters. Is that right? Did I say three and three quarters? Check that one. Yeah, because that's four. Um, and that will, you know, just strengthen it some more. And then it all closes up. So you've got all the detail on top of there. Open it up. And you've got the golden egg, which I don't know if I said is from Marks and Spencers. So I love those ones that you can then make your own packaging for. But there you have it. I think it's lovely. So I hope that's, you know, helped those of you that asked for the double flip in a more of a bigger box. Um, I think that's a great size. I think you can, you know, put a lot of things in that. Definitely a nice candle. And um, because it's it's quite reinforced with the amount of layers that go up around it. So you can, you know, put something a bit more weighted in there as well. So as always, thank you for watching and please give the video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed today and consider subscribing so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.